Hi, uh, I'm Rhys from Woody Wood Spirit. Uh, welcome to the International Association of Wood Carvers. I'm going to talk a little bit about today about my background, uh, what I do, uh, how I've got to this point, and um, yeah, just uh, hope you enjoy it. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome again to the International Association of Wood Carvers. Uh, today is Saturday, the 27th of May, 2023, and uh, want to welcome you all to the last weekly meeting that we're going to have uh, until September. Uh, this will be the last meeting that we have in May, obviously, but uh, starting in June, we're going to go back to our summer series where we'll do one meeting a month. Uh, we start doing that in June because we know that people have other things going on. Uh, there's actually a lot of uh, shows and uh, classes and things that uh, people are participating in, plus a lot of vacations and things going on. Uh, so in June, July, and August, we'll have one meeting a month. Uh, and then starting in September again, we've already started booking people for September. Uh, we'll go back to a weekly um, meeting uh, time on Saturday, again, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. One of those meetings in September will be the CCA Carbon the Rockies show. Uh, we plan on being out there live, so uh, hopefully if you all are able to make it out there, you'll come by and see us. Uh, that is going to be, again, in September on the 23rd and 24th, Colorado Springs, Colorado. Uh, if you get a chance, come out and, uh, and join us. Uh, it's the only show in the United States that uh, is strictly uh, surrounding caricature carving. Uh, so anything and everything caricature carving, including some of the best carvers, uh, probably in the world, uh, will be out there at that show. So if you get a chance, try to come out and uh, join us out there. If you can't make it, we'll be doing the same uh, meeting, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time uh, on that day. We won't adjust the time. It'll be 3 Eastern Standard Time. Uh, we won't go by um, the time that it is in Colorado. We'll leave it at 3 p.m. Eastern. So plan on that. Um, Want to remind you all some of the things that we've got coming up. Um, some of the workshops that are available, uh, you can find that information on uh, woodcarvingacademy.com. Uh, there's two classes that are posted out there right now. Janet Cordell is going to have a class on a female bus uh, that starts on uh, June the 2nd, so that's coming up soon. Uh, Mr. Dave Stetson, who's on with us today, uh, he has a class starting on the 3rd on uh, carving caricature heads. Um, so if you haven't checked those out, you make sure to go out and look at those. Uh, you have to contact the instructor if you're wanting to sign up for those. Uh, so go ahead and reach out to them, get signed up, find out the materials that you need so that you can participate in the class. Again, all of those classes are recorded. Uh, you have access to the recording for a period of time after the class is over. Uh, and you get to see everything that the instructor is doing. So I can't stress enough. If you haven't taken one of these classes online, um, you may in a, in a live class only get to see the instructor you know, once an hour uh, for the time period that you're there for 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, in these classes, you get to see every cut, every thing that the instructor is showing. Uh, and so you actually get more instruction in a, in a video uh, class than you would in a live class. So I, I encourage all of you all to sign up for those and take advantage of those if you get the opportunity. Uh, if you can't take the live classes, again, you can go back and watch the videos. Or you can subscribe to woodcarbonacademy.com and you can go out uh, and watch classes on your own time uh, as time allows. And some of the one, some of the workshops that they've done in the past are available out there now. They're not all available, but there are some. Uh, so make sure you go out and check those out. Um, today on our meeting, we have um, Reese from uh, Woody Wood Spirits. Uh, he's coming to us from Southeast Wales in the United Kingdom. Uh, I stress that or emphasize that because I want to remind you all, this is truly an international meeting. Uh, we make it available at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time in the afternoon so that people across the world can come on. Uh, hopefully, it's not too late for a lot of them. I think for Reese, it's 8 o'clock at night. Um, he is uh, joining us um, to talk about his carbon journey, which I find very fascinating, very interesting. Uh, so I look forward to hearing what he's going to present um, in our meetings coming up in June, we've got Jeff May that's going to be coming on. He's been on with us before. 
He's a chainsaw carver. He does great videos. He does fantastic carvings. Uh, he'll be on with us on June the 24th. Uh, July, we're going to have Randall Stoner, who is the Mad Wood Carver. Uh, he's going to be coming on July the 15th. His work is phenomenal also. Uh, and then in August, we've got Rich Smithson from Helby. Uh, he's going to be doing a special uh, knife making demonstration where he's going to make three knives on our meeting and then auction those knives to ben benefit the International Association of Woodcarvers. Uh, so the knives that he makes in the meeting, he's going to make those available for people to, to bid on as we're having the meeting and the winner will get all three. So uh, that'll be on August the 26th. So those are things that you can look forward to. Um, we're also going to try to do some Zoom room um, open discussions uh, during the summertime. And I'll be posting those on social media. So make sure you keep an eye out for those. But basically uh, what we do in those, because we're paying for the Zoom subscription, uh, we go in and we just open up the room at a certain time. And anybody and everybody who wants to come in can just come in and talk about carving. Um, some of the best carvers, again, in the United States or in the world may be in there where you can pick their brain and ask them questions about how they do certain things. Sometimes demonstrations happen. Uh, sometimes we talk about sharpening, uh, you know, any number of things. So it's a good opportunity to just come in and interact with some of these people that maybe you've never met in person uh, and get some of your questions answered about how you can, uh, can do certain things to allow you to progress in wood carving. So uh, we're going to make those things available uh, just to keep people involved through the summer. And again, I'll be talking about the meetings throughout the summer, uh, making sure everybody is aware on uh, social media when those are available. So keep an eye out for those. And then again, starting in September, we'll be pick back up for a weekly meeting. So just want to bring all those things to your attention. Uh, having said all of that, I uh, want to again introduce uh, Reese. He's coming to us from Southeast Wales, United Kingdom. Reese, I appreciate you coming on today. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you. I uh, look forward to hearing what you have to share with us today. And uh, thanks again for taking your time out in the evening there to come in and join us. Excellent. Thank you very much, Jochen Varian. Um, I'll say a, a Prinheim Dar to you, to you all. Um, uh, it's your afternoon, um, obviously coming from Wales. Uh, I'm, I'm very honoured, very grateful to be invited to this. I, I, I consider myself to have, have joined you as, um, I, I think, one of the one of the normal carvers. I mean, after Lucas last week, you know, it's absolutely phenomenal what he's doing. Um, and I, as as Blake has said, you know, I've I've had quite a um, oh, quite a varied background and, and journey to get to the point that I'm at. I think the first thing uh, that's worth saying, I think probably the same for all of us, is that we do this for a reason. I mean, I I carve because it's 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 my well-being thing. It's my total switch off. Um, and I've realized looking back, and I think with, with the consideration of, of this coming up and other, a few of the things I've done over the last few years, um, I've obviously got some deep need to create, uh, to make, to draw, to, to um, paint, to, um, I, I mean, I look back to, to when I was younger and I was always sort of drawing and making um, I taught myself to play the guitar just uh, again it's not good I limp by with it but it's 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 that kind of thing and then as I got into my sort of um, my teenage years um, I started drawing more and more I, I, I put one of my I, I don't have a studio I don't have anything like that and I've, I've put bits up specially for this and some of my pictures and this is one that I did um, back in 2000 I don't know if you can see that there it's um there we are, sketch of a lion. Um, and I don't, I don't sketch anymore, but clearly when I look back, there's almost a, a track of my need to do these kinds of things. Um, and I, I, I've kind of continued um, evolving, I guess. I mean, from sketching through to other things and now obviously to, to wood carving. Um, hey, Reese. Yeah. Can, can I stop you just a second? I apologize. That's okay, uh, yeah. I, I know you're just getting on a roll. I meant to introduce the fact that we are doing an auction in our meeting today, and I apologize again. I, I know you're right in the middle of getting started. <laughs> uh, we are doing an auction in the meeting. Uh, I, again, I apologize. Uh, the proceeds to this auction is going to go to benefit the International Association of Woodcarvers. I did advertise this on social media, so I hated not to bring it up because I want to make sure that we get this done. Uh, but we have a Mark Akers uh, Santa ornament and a... Helvey Autograph Signature Series, Mark Akers, 
uh, two and an eighth inch healthy knife. Uh, those have been donated. Uh, Mark donated the carving and Rich and Holly from Helvey donated the knife. Uh, we're going to do this auction the way that we have always done them. Uh, put your bid down in the chat. Highest bid will win. It'll be for both items. So we're only doing one auction for both items against the carving and the knife. And a uh, high bid will win. We'll call that at the end of the meeting. So again, I apologize, Reese, for stopping you. I hated not to get, you know, too, I hated to get too far into the meeting and not bring it up. Uh, but place your bids in the chat if you're interested in these items. And again, high bid will win at the end. So, Reese, I'll go ahead and turn it back over to you. I apologize. Go ahead. Hey, no worries. No worries. Um, yeah, so sort of going back to where I currently am, um, I'm, a, I'm a teacher. Um, and when, when I spoke to Blake and, uh, and Dave back a few weeks ago, I, it was kind of, uh, you know, oh, you're not Woody, you're, you're Reese. And, and the reason was when I started, um, when, I, when I set up any of my social media links, um, teaching is a funny profession. Um, in this country, you are either sort of seen to be in it 100% or you're not really committed. Uh, and I think with every, every profession, every job, you've got to have that switch off. You've got to have that something that's sort of going to keep you sane. Um, so I kind of set it up to, to fly under the radar, which um, has been great up, up until doing things like this and, and no longer under the radar. But uh, yeah, what, what I found is that, um, you know, I, I set this up and, and there is an interest in the sorts of things that I do. Um, but like I say, I, I don't tend to push myself forward. I've done the odd uh, sort of sale and bits and pieces, but I use carving as my as my well-being thing, it's my total switch off. Um, you know, with the teaching side of things, I tend to work. Um, I'm a primary a primary teacher, so um, uh, you know, sort of four year olds to eleven year olds, and I'm uh, I guess I'm a deputy head, so I guess for you it's a, a deputy principal. Um, so I've got a huge workload. I've got a lot of um, uh, responsibility, and. I need this something that sort of is creative and is my switch off. And, and as I say to friends of mine, you know, when you're, when you're using very sharp tools, very sharp knives, um, you've got to be 100% committed, 100% concentrating. So it's a perfect, perfect switch off for me. I started, I mean, going back many years, like I say, I was, I was drawing and sketching and doing pictures. And then I ended up um, doing a lot of power using power tools uh, and a lot of wood turning with a power lathe. I did that for, for quite a while. Again, it was my, my release. It was my go and turn something. Um, and we ended up, uh, my wife and I moved closer to one of the schools um, that I was teaching at at the time. And there was heaps of space. It was an old farm and all of the egg buildings had no power. And I still wanted to be doing these things. So the natural thing was to build a, a treadle lathe, a pole lathe. Uh, I turned on that for a long time. Of course, going hand in hand with that was the preparation of the wood to be able to put onto the lathe. So I then built a shave horse, which uh, I'm sure most of you know, but you sit on and you clamp the wood in it and you use a, a, a draw knife to, to shape the billets down. Uh, and with that then became my interest in green woodworking. Uh, I was making things like bism brooms, making um, gate hurdles and fences and bits and pieces like that. Uh, and that kind of rolled on for a short while. I mean, I still make things like that. Um, I, I made during that period, I also did a little bit of chainsaw carving, but didn't, again, it, it's the big stuff and you need the space and the, uh, you know, the, the place to do it. And, and it wasn't convenient for, for what I had at the time. So in the, in the middle of all of this, I started to get um, terrible back problems, uh, whether it was working with the Littlands and, you know, in the school and constantly bent over, I'm, I'm relatively tall, I'm over six foot, uh, and ended up with a, a terrible back problem and about nine years ago ended up absolutely incapacitated on the carpet, unable to move. And I spent about six or seven weeks just on the carpet, not able, able to move, waiting for an operation. Um, and, you know, you can imagine you've got a fair amount of sort of thinking time and, and time to ponder bits and pieces and sort of evaluate the things that I was really enjoying. And it was the, the, it was the woodworking, it was the green woodworking. And after I had the operation, again, it was a fair, fair amount of, um, 
it was a fair amount of recovery time. And when I went back to the consultant surgeon and he said, right, you know, obviously it, we can't promise how this is going to be or how it's going to turn out. You know, what do you aim to get back to? And I took him a picture of the shave horse and it was a case of, you know, I want to be able to do this again. So, you know, it was it's been a lot of physio. It's been a lot of work. It's been a lot of effort. But at that time, I found that obviously couldn't do the bigger stuff, couldn't do the things that were affecting my back. And I started doing more and more of the hand carving, um, the smaller bits and pieces, making wood spirits and, and things like that. And it just slowly began to sort of develop. Um, and it was something that obviously with small tools, uh, I, I prepare the wood obviously outside. Um, and I tend to always uh, carve green wood, unseasoned wood, and I'll, I'll split a bit out or cut a bit out or whatever it may be. And then I wrap it in a plastic, bag and I put it in the fridge and it'll keep it fresh until until you know until I get around to, to carving it so I ended up from the back operation carving lying down and I still carve lying down on the floor to this day I rarely sit for any length of time uh, I probably am more than capable of it now uh, but the consultant I went back to him and he said you know don't put the pressure on your back you either stand or lie and he said, you know, if you watch telly, either lie on the floor or lie on the sofa. Well, I found that if I lie on the floor um, and I prop myself up on a couple of cushions, I can sort of lie on my side and carve. And I put a little, uh, got a small towel I put down to collect the bits. And I've carved like that ever since. I mean, we're, you know, nine years, like I say, down the line. And, and that's how I carve. Um, and it's sort of, it's become you know, uh, it's become what I do. And, and you know, I put various bits and pieces up be behind me. Um, the, the carving of the bits and pieces then progressed into spoon carving. Um, and the spoon carving became a real sort of, uh, I mean, for anybody who is a spoon carver, um, it became almost like a, a, a sort of addiction, like an obsession. I, I love carving anything, but um, to actually make and carve a spoon that is something that you can, that is comfortable to use to eat off. I mean, I've got a few various bits and pieces here that I've, I've just put put on the side, but um, it's bizarre. It, it's it's one of those things that uh, you know to be able to carve a really nice usable spoon is not simple, not straightforward. And I'll, and I'll be honest, it is my go-to now. If I've got a quiet few minutes or it is my switch off at the end of the night, I go to spoon carving. Um, not because it's easy, not because it's easier than carving characters or anything like that. It's just, I seem to be more in an autopilot, whether it's muscle memory or what, I'm not sure, but uh, it's uh, really enjoyable. So I wrote a piece um, for anybody's into spoon carving. There's a, a really well-known guy um, in London, Barn the Spoon, and he put out, this is going back uh, how many years now, five years perhaps, about the, the well-being benefits of, of carving in general, but spoon carving. And I wrote a piece at the time. That I was um, obviously deputy principal, and then I went through a period of being the acting head teacher, the acting principal of our primary school. And it was incredibly stressful. It was a huge amount of work. And I wrote this piece saying, you know, all of these things, wood carving, be it spoons or not spoons, is the total and utter switch off. It's that sort of, um, it, it is absolute full concentration and it takes you away from all, everything else that's going on. And that was then picked up and there was, there was quite a few of us. There was, uh, uh, I guess, between 20 and 30 of us that became part of um, a thing at the, at the Chelsea Fringe in London. It was part of the British Medical Association event um, and it was called Out of the Woods. And it was specifically focusing on the well-being benefits of other things. And in this case, it was spoon carving. And our portrait and um, a photograph of one of our spoons was put up in the in the British Medical Association Library and it was a big event we went down there and it was part of this sort of drive um, which is perhaps not gathering the momentum that it should be in this country on social prescribing which is basically doing things like this to, to save you going onto tablets for you know be it depression or uh, any of these other things it, it's yeah, and they found huge benefits. So the the uh, general practice, the doctors' surgery that was 
uh, their talking and presenting and said how they'd seen a massive reduction in the need for um, tablets when people were able uh, to access within their within their surgery there was gardening there was knitting and crocheting and all these things so from that point of view it was i mean it was a huge privilege to be part of that and and again i, I think like this um i'm kind of I, i'm an unknown I, i'm sort of flying under the radar um so to be picked up for that it was lovely and then off, off the back of that, I ended up sending a spoon. In fact, I've got it here. It's, it's one of our most used spoons uh, in our kitchen. You can see the sort of patina on that, the wear. Um, and that one went to a, uh, an exhibition up country somewhere. I, I don't know where it was, some art exhibition for spoon carvers. Um, so it's lovely. I mean, it's, it's nice to sort of, um, you know, it's nice for them uh, to not be, as my wife describes them, dust collectors, because, you know, I've got to, I keep churning things out. I don't necessarily sell uh, much of anything um, and they've got to go somewhere. And I'd said to Blake and to Dave before we started, you know, to pull these out, they had to come out of boxes and cardboard boxes and bits and pieces to put to put up. So, uh, so yeah, it's, it's you know, my, my kind of journey has, has meandered and, and been in and out of, um, well, spoon carving, the, the whole sort of mental health and well-being side of it. Um, and it is, it's that massive switch off from work. It's that total, you know, I need something to do. And it, it although, like I say, love spoon carving, carving anything, I, I just need that outlet. I mean, I've got, um, if you've looked on my on my Instagram or any of that, uh, there's a, a friend up in the village. She's um, she's uh, Italian descent. Um, she's married an English fella, but they consider that she considers herself to be Welsh. So, you know, in in the tradition of Wales, I carved a, a love spoon for her, and this is um, this is out of some local Welsh yew wood. Uh, in fact, from from one of our uh, trees here at our, where, where I live and you know from this I, I carved this sort of the English flag for, for her husband and the, the Italian flag for her the the symbol of Wales the daffodil with a, a spiral and the, the good luck horseshoe and the heart-shaped bowl and things and it, it's you know a huge amount of time and work as, as you would all know but it, it it's that kind of um I don't know it's just the pleasure of being able to give somebody something that's very meaningful to them uh, you know, I've got, I'm looking the wrong side, a friend of mine got a very, um, a dog that he's, you know, absolutely, uh, him and his wife are sort of so besotted with, and I did a relief carving of, oh, there we are, of, of their dog for them, and um, she works in our school, and this piece of wood was, um, it was going out, it was one of the, the pieces of wood that held the children's coat hooks on and, and it was being replaced and it was chucked outside and I, I reclaimed it. And so that's a lovely piece of beach that uh, that I did the, a relief carving into. Um, and as, as sort of um, as cliched as it is, I guess, I, I don't start with a plan um, ever. I, I, I've never got a, you know, with, with that, that one, obviously there was a plan, it was a specific purpose, um, his dog, it had to look like it. But as much as I used to carve and things, I can't seem to replicate what I draw. So I start with a piece of wood. Um, I might scribble on it a bit, but like I say, as, as sort of as cliched as it is, I just follow where the wood is going to go. And sometimes I might sort of stare at a piece for an indefinite amount of time until I think, right, okay, I know where this is going to go. It might be a spe spoon. It might be a character. Um, but I, I'm yet to, to sort of replicate something that I, I had as a plan. And, and I don't know. I mean, I, I carve very slowly. I don't churn things out. I'm not a quick carver. Uh, and, and in education at the moment, particularly over with us, um, a, friend of, uh, a friend of mine who's also a, a head teacher, and she uses the term slowliness, uh, which is, you know, doing things considered slowly, and to the best that you can do it. And, and I think that's kind of the way I approach, approach this. You know, I, I see what other people are carving. It's in a different league to mine in a lot of time, you know, a lot of cases, much better quality, much nicer. And you look at things, you know, oh, I wish I could do that. But 
you know, I, I'd like to consider, you know, and I said this to, to Blake and Dave, that I, I sort of represent the normal people, you know, I'm, I'm just somebody doing the best I can and having a, having a good go and experimenting and, and just enjoying it. I mean, just, uh, it, it, like, I'm sure like you, it becomes a, a total need, an absolute obsession to sort of pick up the tools um, and just make things. And we, we've discussed this previously, um, you know, with, uh, with Dave and, um, and Blake. And I said, you know, please don't ask me about sharpening. I'm not a sharpening person. I should sharpen more often. I should be honing more often. I just want to pick my tools up and carve. So occasionally I get to the point where I'm going, nah, this, is, this needs a proper sharpen now. So um, I, I'm just looking by there because I've got a couple of my tools there. I'm, I'm probably quite ashamed to show you the state of, uh, of, of, of some of them. But um, yeah, I... I I only use hand tools these days. I um, I don't tend to, apart from the chainsaw, I don't use power tools anymore. It's all um, hand saws, it's axes, it's throws. I, I bought a couple down. I got my small fro there, you know, for splitting, splitting at the, the wood. Um, I've got, uh, and I know everybody's got their own preference. And again, I've, I've got a couple of old um, axes that I've rehandled myself, but this is this is my go-to. This is um, a Grand's Falls carver, um, and again, don't look at the edge; it's uh, it's not in good nick. But um, I absolutely love the shape of it. I love the feel and the weight of it, and that is absolutely my go-to. And then, obviously, down to my hand tools. Um, I I like to support um, local or you know relatively local. Uh, makers you know anybody who's having a go and making um making tools i think it's the way forward uh, but admittedly i've got i've got tools like everybody else i've got mora's and um i've got uh robin wood of wood tools who's over here um i bought early on when he um i can't say when he first started doing them but early when they were getting into it my spoon carving knives which are just glorious to use i mean they're, they're fab and and i think it's always the same isn't it you know you 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 buy you buy things with what you you know with what you can afford but i think with tool makers you know you've got to pay a little bit more to get the to get the quality things um and they are they're an absolute joy to to use and you know with things like that i, I haven't got a huge range of tools um don't think unless i've had the odd few things bought as presents for me um but generally, I, I look secondhand eBay and, and sort of scout around and try and find things and, you know, end up making, this is what I posted the other day, a little, um, it's a little cherry scoop. And, and actually, I've, I've steered clear of uh, milk paint and things and had a little foray into, into using milk paint and put these little scoops in, painted it and then sanded it back. And, and it's turned out really nicely. And um, it's, it's just lovely. And I, I carve everything, like I say, green and season. So... You, you run the risk of things splitting, but generally uh, I tend to do all right. Things don't, um, I, I think because I, I don't carve things quickly and it's not that hot here, you know, it, they dry slowly and, um, and so they don't have that rapid shrink and split. Um, and then with, with my little characters and, and bits and pieces, again, it's, there isn't a plan that the closest thing I've ever come to following a drawing, I think is, um, uh, where is it? There he is. My my middle my middle child drew a little picture and she said, "Dad, can you carve this?" And it was um, it was supposed to be a present holding a balloon. So um, again, you can see it's it's not a huge amount of skill involved, but it's it's quite cute. It's um, it's quite a nice one. Um, and with school, we were doing little uh, a theme, um, obviously with the with the Welsh coal mines and and things. And we'd read about the they call cobbly knife the knockers. And I carved a little, um, a little, uh, little cobbly knife there, a little mining fella. And again, no real plan, just a case of there's a piece of wood. Where is it going? That's what it ended up being. And and yeah, I got relatively pleased with it. It looks quite nice. Um, and in the last few years, and again, um, I'm not a massive follower of people. I, I I know from experience that I tend to be a bit of a copier. Uh, if I see things, I, I can't seem to shift it out of my head and, and replicate similar things to them. But there are some, you know, fantastic people out there. And there's a guy, um, uh, Dan Riggett, who's, um, again, in, in, in I think he's in Wales, uh, or at least he's certainly in the UK. Um, 
and he does the most amazing amazing things down here he covers his little fellas but one of the things he does is he uses uh little magnets and you'll see this little guy here there he is and his arms move because he's got oh where's the camera there it is he's got these little magnets so that'll clip on um and actually i've just had to prize it out of my daughter's hand before we could get on with this i carved this little fella a few um few years ago again little magnet in his hat um and he's got little interchangeable hairstyles, so it can go one way or another. But he's also got a little uh, little mo mohawk that'll fit on him. Again, it'll go either way, and a, a little uh, little hat that'll fit on at jaunty angles. So yeah, she was. Oh, Hey, Reese, I think it uh, muted you when you dropped that. <laughs> Thank there you very go. much. Yeah, no, um, yeah. Try, trying to integrate like new little um, ideas and bits and pieces into my carving, and, and even like the, the, the little, um, the little eyes. You know, just a little drill, a little hole, and, and slide those down in. So, yeah, I, I tend to um, be quite erratic with what I carve because, like I say, I don't have a plan. It, it tends to be a case of pick things up and run with it. Um, I mean, I got I got a slap on the wrist because I'm part of a fantastic uh, Facebook group, the UK Whittlers, um, who have an absolute ban on on spoons. And I kind of I, I, I ducked under the radar on that one because uh, they wanted to see, I think it's feathers being carved. And, and unfortunately, um, my 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 feather was attached to a spoon but um, they let they let me slip through and uh, i promoted this on it yesterday and there was there were spoons on there so but now they they're a fab group and and so many uh so many lovely sort of and, and quality skilled carvers on there so yeah that's um that's another one but i think also again you kind of live and learn um this is catalpa um and i always fancied making myself a mug i mean i got my uh got my pink floyd mug but um and I made this, and I'm sure there are people who would know that I didn't know that it's um, it's ring porous. So my first cup of coffee went in it, and just oozed out. It was like a sweating mug. It was disgusting. So uh, so yeah, I learned my lesson. It's now just a showpiece. But I've also made um, cooks proper. This is this is a nice one. This is uh, one that will take coffee, and um, yeah, that, that they. They are lovely to use, and, and I don't know, you know, there's something absolutely glorious about wood. I, 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 I quite often, and, and my, my, I, I think she's got used to it now. My wife will um, kind of catch me doing this as I'm as I'm carving, and I'll be going and sort of inhaling the the, the smells from the different woods. I mean, everything. Um, I mean, these are cherry at the moment, but I tend to carve whatever I can get. Uh, I, I, I very rarely carve. Um, very rarely carve lime wood, what you what you call basswood. Um, just I just don't get my hands on it very often. I did buy some um, a few years ago, and it came as a sort of pack. And in it, there was different sizes, and I ended up with um, uh, an inch by inch size. And I was like, what on earth can you do with that? I mean, what was I going to carve with that? And I I ended up um, up on the top somewhere up there. There's, there's some my point. That's the trouble. My camera's back to front there. Uh, ended up carving some little roses, um, which all right. But I ended up then carving, um, and this was this was following a plan because it's my actual finger. But you can see see the size of it, and I said, like, "What what am I going to do with that?" So uh, I actually carved a replica of my um, <laughs> my finger, which I, I don't know what I plan to do with it, but uh, it was quite nice to do. So. Um, yeah, so like I said, I, I, oh, there's there's another one of my inch sized ones. That, you know, what do you do with it? It was, uh, it might have been close to Halloween, but um, carved this. Oh, not very good with this camera. Carved this little sort of skeleton kind of guy. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that was that was my brief foray into um, into trying to carve lime wood, uh, basswood. I've also got uh, tried a few times. I haven't really sort of. Um, made a huge effort with it but this this was again a lovely um i don't know what this possibly was oak it was something that took to ebonizing well um and i read about you know putting uh wire wool in with vinegar and then painting it on and this was um 
you can see there a little sort of pumpkin man and that is just ebonized there's no other coloring on that at all and um yeah i i, I like that one it's uh it's not one that's gonna it's gonna leave my possession anytime soon i don't think and then there's other bits and pieces of it just see it up there this was um uh, my my sister and my brother are both in the medical profession um and my sister during during covid and during all the, all of the lockdowns um obviously uh, as we did as schools had to had to be open and, and accept the children in and, and she was obviously working in the hospital and accepting people in and she sent me a photo of at the end of a shift absolutely sort of in all her gear and she's um, a radiographer so obviously on her day shifts she was wearing big the usual lead, um, lead aprons and all that kind of gear that they wear plus all of the the covid sort of stuff and and i carved that for her at the time because they were wearing face shields and um and bits and pieces so yeah it, it's i think do you know what that one is a piece of um that is a piece of of, of lime wood a piece of basswood that i'd uh, i've been given but again no real plan to that one it was a case of right let's um the, the photo she'd sent me I, I didn't try to make it look like her, i just tried to replicate it as uh, the, the kind of look as best i could um I was saying to Blake before we sort of came on, COVID was a, a, an interesting time as well. We, um, during the lockdowns, we were, we were open as a school and it gave me time to, um, gave me time to do a bit of carving. You know, school was a big issue at the time we were trying to deal with children and the stresses that they were under with children, um, children's parents working in the hospitals. And of course we were in such a, an unknown situation at the time that, you know, it, it, was, it was tough, tough going. But what I ended up doing, um, and again, not not quite carving related, but very much the sort of this need that I have that I know lots of people have uh, for creativity. Um, I, I love being outside um, and I started doing short videos for the school and uh, it was just, you know, anywhere up to sort of 10 minutes ish and just about so the kids could get to learn about trees we were encouraging the children to be outside get fresh air and uh, and I was a conversation with a parent who'd said to me you know what worries me is I can take the kids out they're asking us the questions but I don't know I don't know trees I don't know plants so I started making these these small videos um and I think sort of 98 videos later, I decided that I needed a break from it. And I did one a week for, for 98 weeks. Uh, and we covered everything from uh, identifying trees through to different plants, not tying. Uh, I did do a video on making a bism broom, on uh, using my pole lathe, things like this. I haven't done one on carving just because of the, the concern I've got the children might like, grab hold of a knife and go and have a go and then I'll be responsible. But um, yeah, so I, I kind of, you know, that was a, that was a little lockdown project that went on way longer than I thought. Um, but I, uh, like I say, you know, I, I, I rarely stop and take stock and think about why I'm doing these things and, and what the purpose is. And, and obviously, I, I've got this sort of massive need to to be creative, to to be making things and doing things. And and uh, and it, it, you can see how how it's gone from drawing to bigger things to smaller things and now I, I feel like I've really settled into what I love it's uh, I got got my little box there with all my tools in and and not a, not a huge amount of tools like I say and and it's it's great it's it goes on holiday with us and you know we'll go around to friends houses for perhaps a barbecue and and I'll sit there <laughs> whittling away and and they're all chatting and things so it's yeah it's, it's become very much part of my life and a and a very important part of my life. Hey, Ray, so Lee had a question in the chat. Somebody wanted you to repeat the kinds of uh, spoon carving tools that you use. Can you go through that again? Cool. Yeah, no worries at all. Yeah, I've got them here, so I'll, I'll pull them out and, and show you. So, um, oh, what have I got? I, for the, uh, you know, a straight blade is a straight blade, but I, I, I can't, uh, do you know, I can't for the life of me remember the guy. He, he, he was on instagram or facebook i'm not sure he even does it anymore but um he made me that little knife and i made a handle for it um but that's a that's a lovely little you know straight bladed knife and there's also this one which is a curious little one but it, it it works incredibly well um and holds a really lovely edge so i i've got quite a few different you know knife blades like that and everything else is things that i've thrown a bid onto on um 
on on eBay, say, and uh, ended up with sometimes I've won it, sometimes I haven't, sometimes they're not brilliant, but um, these these are these are my go to. So I've got um, you can see that see the different angles of those. These are Robin Wood uh, of Wood Tools. He's a UK maker and he makes absolutely beautiful, um, beautiful tools uh, and really trying to reinvigorate. He, he's up in Sheffield and obviously Sheffield in this country was renowned for its steel uh, and trying to reinvigorate the fact that it, Sheffield was the heart of sort of steel. Um, and he's, he's up there and he's making these tools and, and got a small factory going now from what I can see. Uh, but these are fab. These are really, really lovely and, and so affordable. They're, they're not expensive tools. They tend to be my go-to. And then outside of that, I've got, um, here's one of the, that's, that's a quite an old um, Mora, which is the double-edged one, which is great. Um, but I mean, it, it's it's got its uses, um, and you know what it's like. You, you sort of have your favourites, you go to. I've got a lovely little. Um, uh, now this is a Henry Taylor um, one. Again, this was. I'm not even sure if they make these anymore, but that's a, a great little um, spoon knife. Now I've only got right-handed ones. I'm right-handed, uh, and a lot of people. That, that's what I should have said about this one. A lot of people buy the left-handed ones as well, because obviously with the grain of the wood. Um, when you're scooping out your uh, your bowl, you know you, you're kind of looking at at that sort of. Um, but obviously, you need to go that way as well. So I I tend to sort of make do the best I can with what I've got. Um, I, I do use that that one with the double edged a little bit. I've also got now I've got a feeling this one. This is a Svant. I hope I'm saying it right. Svant Jarve. Um, Again, it's uh, I use this one for some, you know, some aggressive sort of remove. Oh God, I, I just can't get a grip with where this camera is. With some, you know, with with aggressive removal, it's a lovely strong blade. So you know, sort of really go to. I use this one a lot when when making things like these little scoops to really sort of shift the shift the stock. And and like I say, I, I'm not. Um, I don't use the power tool, so it's all hand power um i've got a little this was my first ever spoon knife and um i i uh, i made a little um little case for it with a little hinge on it so this one is a, a mora um the main problem with this one is that nasty little spike there now i see they they re, they still do these but they've got a slightly rounded tip and i've seen people with the older ones like this will, will grind them off because they they can catch you a little bit but I, I haven't, I've left it as it is. Um, but again, uh, a nice one, they've all, I suppose they all, as, as, with, as with straight knives, you, you find that they have a use for a particular, um, a particular part. Have I got, uh, I'm not sure if I've got, oh, the only other thing I've got, which this was a present, and I think this is a Hans Carlson. Um, and this is a lovely little, um, a lovely little tool. So that, oh, there we are, is, um, you know, for, for sort of deeper ones or whatever. And again, it's, it will, but that's, that's a lovely tool. That was a present, but you know, everything is, tools are expensive. So I tend to be, you know, quite selective. And, and I've got my little merry band of, of tools here that fall, that fit into, uh, well, I'll show you the size of the box now. And it's, it's got, there we are. It was given to me by one of the children that I taught as a sort of a present and pretty much everything that I use fits in that box. I've got my two Moras, uh, this lot here. I've got a little um, weather. See, I, I run the risk now of being ridiculed, but um, I use a little piece of uh, MDF for my stropping with some um, auto sole uh, car polish, metal polish. Um, and then I've got a few other odds and sods that I use. Um, this was, again, this was a little blade that was, it was a, a maker that, um, and that's quite a nice little knife. Again, you can see I've, I've copied, copied uh, the flex, the flex cut um, knife handle, but it's, it's great. That's another nice little knife. And, um, and the only other thing that I've got that I use quite a bit, and this was, uh, again, I, I asked for this, this was made, um, is a tiny little detail um, knife. Again, I made the handle. That was, I think that was, um, 
think that was a piece of plum or something. Um, but again, that's that's another nice little tool. And, and I make I make all my little sheaths. I, 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 I kept them at a shop because I, I'm not showing them off because I'm not always that impressed with them. But um, like that's the finger off an old leather glove, but uh, it does the job. And these, these three here I made, um, these were a pair of old boots that I had and, and just bought a few uh, little rivets and, and that one I sewed. Um, but yeah, I, I'm not, um, I don't, don't want to go spending money on things that I don't need to. Again, it comes back to that need to make things. This Again, that was just a piece of piece of leather that um, it, it fits snug enough. It, it keeps, keeps me safe. So that's all that matters. Um, and then outside of that, this is a, it could be a Henry Taylor again, but it's, uh, it's just a flat palm gouge. And that one is part of a set that I bought as a kid. I was probably I had some money when I was sort of, I don't know, 13 or whatever, and um, bought this set and never really got to make good use of it until I got, got a bit older. But yes, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a great little, um, just a great little palm gauge, that one. Was that okay? Was that, did yeah, that answer? That so, so there's another question in the chat about Sheffield and uh, why better still comes from there. Is it the natural resources? Uh, the yeah, traditional yeah, it, factories. What's what? Yeah, I, I, th I think yeah, I think it's it's probably the natural resources, um, but also, I think just a, a history of, um, you know, we in Wales we were producing high quality um, coal that was making the coke for sort of the blast furnaces and things like that, and um, I guess that combined with the the natural resources that were there uh, ends up making. Good steel. I, I don't know. I mean, it's you know, you see things with Sheffield steel stamped on it, and I mean, it it, it used to, and 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 I guess that's Robin Wood's idea. It, it it's it used to speak quality, and that's where we're trying to go back to, I guess, with that. So yeah, I I don't know the absolute um, answer to that, but I'm going to say it's just because it's in UK. So there you go. Um, another question with your spoons and things. Do you have a finish that you use on those? What do you usually put on them after you finish? Um, a couple? Yeah, I tend to um, I tend to carve them, then I, I I leave them just lying around to to dry, and then I'll I'll put finishing cuts onto them. Um, it, it's, sometimes I do sharpen my knives and try and do the the, the finishing cuts. Uh, then I burnish them with uh, a piece of antler. So this was um, this was actually uh, the friend of mine who I um, carved the dog for, and, and that went up there. Uh, he was buying um, antler as like a dog chew for, for his dog and the dog didn't like it. And he said, do you want it? I went, oh yeah, I do. So I filed that um, and made it round on, on both ends. So I'll burnish it first. So just sort of really sort of scrape it round and, and flatten the, um, fl oh God, I can't get to grips with this camera. Anyway, I'll flatten the fibers. And then um, I tend to just use um, walnut oil because obviously with it being food safe and it will polymerize uh, over time or pop it out in the sun and it'll sort of harden. It gives it a much better um, hard wearing finish. And also it doesn't, I don't find that it leaves a taste. Um, it's, I mean, it works well for me. For, for some of these I'll use, um, particularly if I'm gonna paint some, I'm not gonna show you my painting because it's pretty diabolical, but um, I, I tend to use um, boiled linseed oil and that's it. But I generally stick to, uh, I generally stick to walnut oil because then it, it saves any cross contamination and just pop it on and job done. So do we have any questions in the chat? Does anybody have any questions for Reese today regarding his curry? While we're waiting, I'll remind everybody about the uh, the auction that we're doing with the uh, Mark Akers uh, Healthy Signature Series knife and the uh, Santa carving. Uh, we'll leave the chat open there, or the bid for the chat uh, for those items until the end of the meeting. So if you're interested in that, make sure you put your bid up there. Now, Reese, can you tell everybody about the YouTube page as far as what the name is and how they can find it in case they want to go out and see those videos you're talking about? Yes, it is. Yeah, so the, the, the outdoor videos that, um, yeah, the outdoor videos that I started doing, it's under Mr. Dot C uh, Outdoors. Um, 
And I think did uh, if I don't know I, I haven't got it to hand at the moment, but I, I you know I sent it to you, Blake. You could always drop it in the in the chat if people are interested. It's uh, like I say, it's it's just something that I did out of interest and out of sort of um, trying to sort of be useful during lockdown to share a little bit. Um, but also, I, I guess it's it's nice because again, it made me realise how how beneficial. I, I suppose everything comes back to this whole idea of, of looking after yourself and and sort of. Um, Again, using a phrase that a friend of mine uses, you know, you put your own ox oxygen mask on first because, you know, you, you can't you can't be teaching. You can't be looking after kids. You can't be sort of, you know, running your own, um, you know, looking after other people until you've sort of got yourself sorted. Can you? So, yeah, it, it's a case of this is my this is my oxygen mask. This is my time to, to sort of switch off to, to take care of myself, to um, to do that. And, and like that. Uh, and like the. Um, the, the videos, it, it was great to know it did become a bit of a bind. It was a bit of a, a hassle in the end. But, you know, to, to think on the weekend, I have to go and do these videos. Um, people want to see them and things. So, uh, so yeah, I, it, I knew I had to be away from work to do that. So, yeah, it was, it was good. Um, I think I just, uh, somebody asked about wood for, for spoons. Yes. Like I say, I tend to use whatever I can get my hands on. I've got a, a friend who is um, his full time job is a gardener. So anytime he comes across anything unusual, um, anything different or something he knows I like, he will save me some. I, I currently got access to quite a lot of fresh cherry wood. A massive cherry tree has fallen out of um, out of a, a woodland where my in-laws live. And I'm kind of harvesting that as and when I need it. I, I do love cherry wood, but there's things like, um, it, I suppose it's the surprise when you split open a piece of wood, uh, you know, use the throw and you kind of sink, sink that into it and it cracks open. Um, and sometimes it's like Christmas and it, you, you kind of see this piece of wood and you think, my goodness, this is just beautiful. Um, I had a piece of uh, plum off my parents' plum tree. It had sort of, it, it was it was dying back and we thought, well, we'll prune that off now. and. And when I split that, I mean, the colouring in it, it was reds and purples. It was absolutely stunning. Um, again, as you would know, the different woods are different to carve. Some are a nightmare, some are lovely. I, I do love carving cherry. Um, there was uh, lilac I carved relatively recently. The smell was, oh, it was just divine. It, you, you know, the, I, I said, you know, you'll catch me kind of sniff, sniffing wood and sniffing spoons, um, but it was, it was gorgeous. It was, and it had this beautiful purple streak running up through it. Um, so yeah, I, I don't, I couldn't say off, uh, you know, like I say, I'm carving cherry at the moment. I'm gonna tell you it's cherry, but uh, I mean, silver birch is lovely to carve. Um, there's um, loads of different woods that, that, that are great for, for carving spoons. I mean, I'll, I, I did get some uh, maple off a friend of mine and it was a big, big tree. It was probably, well, I say big tree. It was, it was, it was about a foot and a half in, um, in diameter. And then it split into a V. And the problem it had is in this V, it was holding water and the water obviously started to rot and go down through the trunk. So, when it was cut down, he said, you know, you're going to have to have a piece of this. The colouring in it, it's beautiful. And it was. The, I mean, the, I don't think I've got anything by me at the moment. But the colouring through it was amazing. But actually, the smell off it was absolutely foul. It was it was disgusting. It would sort of stay on your hands for oh, for days. Um, but once it had dried and it had seasoned and it was oiled, it was absolutely fine. But, yeah, so you get the two ends of the scale. Um, I see somebody put, put there about poisonous woods. There is. And there's... Um, there's some that you you would avoid. I mean, like I say, that's carved out of yew. Yew is known to be a poisonous wood, but I've read so much about you know the amount of yew wood you would have to actually you, you basically have to eat the spoon to have a problem with it. Um, you, you've got. Uh, I mean, there are others that people get contact issues with. Um, I haven't, but there's. Um, Laburnum with that beautiful chocolate, you know, it's got that sort of yellowy whitish um, sapwood and then the heartwood is that deep, deep chocolate colour. And I know, you know, people who've said that they've had contact issues from the sap from it and from carving that. Um, I suppose, you know, when I was a wood carver, you're always considering the, the dust and, and the effect of the dust when you're carving things green, you don't have that. But yeah, there's a good, 
and I can't remember off the top of my head, but there's, um, there's a website that, and in most carving groups, you'll see, especially spoon carving groups, somewhere in the archive, there's this link to wood, uh, poisonous woods and the idea of them. Um, and quite often I, I had somebody, a <laughs> couple of, uh, it was a couple of months ago now, I carved a spoon out of a wood. And they went, oh, you do realize it's poison. I went, yeah, it's only for me and I don't plan to eat it. So um, yeah, they, you know, I'm, I'm not sort of, uh, I'm not downplaying the, the, the risk of poisonous woods, but, um, you know, it's uh, our spalted woods. Yeah, um, I've carved, I rarely get my hands on spalted woods. And I'll be honest, I've, I've had a few people who've had spalted spoons off me. And, um, and, and like with, with lots of the things that I, you know, particularly the, the, the kitchen utensils, um, and I'll say, you know, how, how was it? Is it the right shape? Is it working for you? And they went, oh, it's great. And, and I say, you know, is, is it working for you? You know, how, how is it? And I went, no, no, it's on display. And you're going, you know, these things are functional. They should be used. You should be sort of, you know, eating your breakfast with them or using them for yogurt or whatever. And uh, no, the, the one lady um, uh, that I knew a few years ago, I actually ended up with, with a shelf of all of my things on on display. I was like, well, please use them, you know, stop, stop displaying things and make use of them. But uh, I suppose it's, it's a bit of an honor to have, uh, have your own shrine in somebody's house. Um, actually, I, on, on uh, link to that, there was, um, I, and I, you have to go back a couple of years, well, a few, a few of my posts, but it was a, a professor uh, living relatively local to me and, and obviously we've got a huge amount of history in um, in Britain um, and particularly going back to the Romans and the Celts and sort of Druids and and he was uh, he commissioned me to carve um, it was basically it was a, a, a Celtic sort of um, it, it was a, a, a god goddess actually um, that was found uh, at an archaeological site in the basement of what was a Roman house so that this Roman house, it's, it's not too far, about half an hour away from where I live, uh, when they were excavating for the Roman things, um, they'd found below the floor of what had been the Roman house, this, this Celtic um, mother god uh, buried there. And this guy was, you know, a professor of this history kind of things and, and had commissioned me to make a replica. But of course, I was working off photographs and kind of trying to scale things. But yeah, I, I mean, he he knew way better than I did, so he was he was happy with it. So that was good. And and then it was another one um, that I was commissioned to make, which was uh, like a blacksmithing god again, which was going back to I think it was pre-Roman time. But it's it's always interesting when you get these things because obviously you read around it. And and for this guy in particular, I sourced a piece of oak that was very close to to where this um, where this idol was was found. And and to try and just tie it all in together so it, it, it sort of uh, it's the right way to go about it that yeah interesting it's in, interesting to sort of get these um, these little things that crop up hey race do you have a resource as far as uh, spoon carving goes uh, that you go to to be able to find you know the right way to carve a spoon or certain patterns or any of that kind of stuff or do you just do it just based uh, on what comes to you do you know um when, when when we kicked off i scribbled an extra note by there and i my my, my note was terrible student i i'm just not a good student um you know as a teacher it's, it's terrible i kind of i kind of teach in the way where i think that uh you know in the style that if i was in the class i'd be the biggest nuisance because i i don't like to be told and, and like i say i i'm not I, I i see things and i can't get it out of my head and i end up sort of copying these things so I try not to, I try not to, to look at too much. And when I look back at my early spoons, um, quite a few of them now are used uh, as, as sort of kindling on the fire because, you know, you, you, you're pleased with it. But my, I, I, I'm sure my carving journey could have progressed at a much faster rate, but I don't tend to, to go places. I mean, I'm, I, I, I think on, I think it's on Facebook. I'm part of spoon carving, uh what is it now um sloyd and, and it's a but i don't tend to over overlook it i tend to just I, I i do tend to just do my own thing there are a few there was a lovely spoon um again i, I go back to barn the spoon the, the guy in london um and he's he's written a book and, and my wife bought it for, for christmas i think it was and lovely lovely spoons now and i did replicate one of those for her for for cooking but i I'm not, uh, you know, I, I see people with spoons. You can, um, 
you know, is that, I can't remember, what, one of the groups, and they produce um, templates and you, you know, draw it on your wood and, and off you go. Um, I don't think I've ever got two spoons the same because it's a case of, I split it out in the shed on my, on my block. Um, I hack away at it. I tend to just with a pencil draw on the, on the sort of, on, on the, the shape of the wood that I've got. Um, and it goes from there. I don't have a plan. You'll, you'll see, you know, I, I posted one the other day. It's asymmetric because that's how it works out from the piece of wood I've got. Um, and no, I, I, I don't, there are so many good, good, you know, spoon carvers out there. There's so many good, um, you know, places to go and learn and, and sort of YouTube channels and stuff, but I'm useless. I just avoid it. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, sorry, not, not much help there. Hey, have a look at me. I'll, I'll tell you what to do. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I see some, have... somebody's put Z outdoors. Sorry, Blake. Um, somebody's put Z. Yeah, he's, he's great. I've seen um, he's posted lots. And um, in fact, there are people uh, that, that he's got videos of were part of that spoon carving thing I did for the uh, back in you know, a couple of years ago for the British Medical Association. Um, people uh, like Deborah Schneebly Morrell. She's great. Uh, it's a guy. Um, oh, God, what's his name there? Richard. Oh, I can't remember. There's, there's loads of good ones. Yes, yeah, so if you search that up, you, you'll find loads of good information there. Can you uh, can you tell everybody where they can find you on social media? I know Instagram, uh, Facebook. Yeah, yeah. Uh, where yeah, can they yeah, find yeah. you there? Yeah, just, just don't look up Reese. I don't exist. <laughs> um, if you look up Woody Woody Wood Spirit or Woody Spirit, um, yeah, I, I put it down. See in the corner of my name down there. I, I put Reese Woody Spirit, so it's it's at Woody Spirit or at Woody Wood Spirit. So um, yeah, that that's kind of kind of where I am. Yes, like I say, I don't I don't tend to promote myself much. I just sort of uh, fly under the radar, just the way I like it. All right. Any other questions for Reese today from the group? Okay, Reese. Cool. Uh, I want to thank you for coming on. Um, always friends of ours. I, I love the fact that you're uh, you're in uh, Southeast Wales. So thanks for joining us. Uh, and hopefully you'll come on to some of our meetings again in the future. Uh, we're yeah. always talking about carving, and there's a variety of things that we've had on these meetings before. Uh, so maybe we'll have you on again sometime down the line. Uh, but I want to thank you for spending your time with us today and sharing with us. Uh, and I may have some questions about uh, some spoon carving coming up. So uh, I'll be reaching out to you and uh, asking those questions. Uh, I want to remind you all for a few more minutes. We've got uh, the Mark Acres uh, Signature Series uh, Helvy Knife that's available along with the Santa Ornament uh, that's going to be uh, auctioned off here in the chat. So you got a few more minutes uh, to place your bids in the chat for that. Uh, right now the bid is, and I'm going back to look, it uh, looks like we are at 275. Uh, so if anybody's interested in those, again, the proceeds go uh, to IAWC to allow us to continue to have these meetings. We have to pay for the Zoom subscriptions. Uh, so if you're interested in that, just a few more minutes, put your bid in the chat for those. Um, again, after this week, we're going to our summer series. Uh, we'll meet uh, June 24th, July 15th, and August 26th. Uh, I'll place all of those dates out in social media periodically throughout the month so everybody remembers that we're getting together on those days. Again, try to join us if you can. Uh, we take this break during the summer to allow people to go uh, do things that they need to do. Uh, hopefully, you'll take time out of your schedule to come in and join us uh, so that we can continue to have these meetings in the fall and the winter time when it's a little harder to get out. Uh, but again, Reese, I thank you for coming on. I appreciate you sharing with us today. You're welcome anytime. So I look forward to having you back. Uh, and uh, just want to thank you all for coming on to the International Association of Woodcarvers meetings. Uh, we're always having these meetings to try to help woodcarvers uh, either be motivated or uh, to, to progress in your carving. So I want to thank you for coming on today. Uh, we'll paste, uh, post this video out on YouTube probably tomorrow. Uh, so it'll be available out there if you're looking for these resources that he's uh he shared with us as far as tools and things go. Uh, and we'll put his social media information out there so that you can click on the links. Again, thanks for coming on with us today. Uh, we'll see you all the next time on June the 24th, uh, where we'll have Jeff May coming on to present. 
Everybody have a good summer. We'll see you in a few weeks. Thank you all. It's not hard to do. Um, and we can do as many takes as we need to, um, you know, so it's not a big deal. So, uh, yeah, so well, yeah, yeah no, see, now you've said that, it's going to be a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> it's never a big deal until it is a big deal, It's right? the biggest yeah, deal no, we have to do today. <laughs> oh, well, there we are. <laughs> well, I'm about to cock it up, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah say, we'll let you go whenever you want to go. Um, and if you want to practice a few times, practice. I just record until... You know, if it's good and I have to splice something together, I can do that too. So it's not a big deal. So it's 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 is it sort of welcome to International Association of Woods? Uh, yeah, have it out of wood <laughs> Yeah, International Association of Wood Carvers. That's is it, it's like welcome to. Yeah, is, it, is yeah. that what we're saying? Just well, yeah. yeah just to, you know, introduce who you are because we want to know who you are. You know, so we can find you, um, and then just welcome into the International Association of Wood Carvers. You can you can tell a little bit about what you're going to do today if you want, but simple the simplest thing is if this is me welcome so yeah okay how do you want hey, to here we go let's go for it now um he's man. a pro he's Dude. a pro one and done yeah i like oh, is that is that it done <laughs> yeah, that's yeah it. see i told you it was easy man right so, uh, so, so see you in 20 minutes then <laughs> yeah. well talk to you later go to the restroom <laughs> yeah no it's uh, oh dear you pause